Imagine a computer that could solve in seconds problems that would take today as fast as supercomputers millions of years. A machine so powerful it could revolutionize medicine, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and even our understanding of the universe. This isn't a scene from science fiction, it's the emerging reality of quantum computing. But what exactly is quantum computing? How does it work? And why do so many scientists and tech companies call it the next generation of processing power? In this video, we'll break down the complex world of quantum computing into simple, easy to understand concepts. By the end, you'll have a clear picture of its potential and the challenges that stand in the way. Classical computing basics. Before we talk about quantum, let's revisit the computers we use every day. Traditional computers, whether it's your laptop, smartphone, or a massive data center are based on bits. Each bit is either a one or a zero. You can think of bits like tiny switches, on or off. With billions of these bits, classical computers perform calculations at lightning speed. They power everything from checking email to simulating weather patterns, but there's a catch. The more complex the problem, the more computing power you need. For some tasks, like simulating molecules or cracking encryption, the required calculations grow so large that even the world's most advanced supercomputers would take millions of years. Before we dive into the strange and fascinating world of quantum computers, let's take a moment to understand the computers we already use every single day. Whether you're watching this on a smartphone, a laptop, or even a cloud-based server, all of these devices share one fundamental building block, the bit. What is a bit? A bit is the most basic unit of information in classical computing. It can only exist in one of two states, zero or one. Think of it like a light switch. It's either off, zero, or on, one. By combining billions of these switches, computers can store and process information. For example, the letter A in your text is stored as a pattern of O south and 1 south, A. High definition photo is stored as millions of pixels. Each pixel's color represented by a unique combination of O south and 1 south. Even this video script is just a long sequence of bits being transferred across the internet to your screen. How bits work together. Bits don't work alone, they form bytes, 8 bits, kilobytes, megabytes, and beyond. By grouping and processing these bits at unimaginable speeds, computers perform everything from simple math to simulating entire weather systems. Classical computers use a model called the binary system, which is essentially math with only two digits, 0 and 1. This binary language is universal it. Doesn't it matter if you read in Silicon Valley or Tokyo, every classical computer processes information the same way. Processing power and logic gates. Now, how do these O South and One South actually compute things? Inside every computer are billions of tiny electronic components called transistors. Transistors act as switches that control the flow of electricity. They're combined into logic gates, which perform basic operations, and both must be true. O, R, either one is true. N, O, T, flip zero into one or one into zero. By linking millions of these gates together, we can build complex circuits that run your apps, games, and even artificial intelligence algorithms. From simple to supercomputers. The computers on your desk or in your pocket are incredibly powerful, but they read nothing compared to supercomputers. Supercomputers are massive machines, often filling entire rooms with thousands of processors working in parallel. They're used for things like weather prediction, nuclear simulations, protein folding for medical research, space exploration calculations. Even so, Supercomputers still rely on the same binary principle, bits that are either zero or one, the limitations of classical computing. Here's the problem. As tasks get more complex, the number of calculations grows exponentially. Take, for example, simulating molecules for drug discovery. 
Each molecule has countless possible configurations of atoms, and the calculations required to simulate their behavior grow so quickly that even the world's fastest supercomputers can to handle them efficiently. Or consider modern encryption. Breaking a 2048-bit encryption key by brute force would take a supercomputer longer than the age of the universe. This exponential scaling creates a barrier a wall classical computing simply can't break through. No matter how many transistors we pack onto a chip, that's why researchers began exploring a different approach. A type of computer not bound by the strict rules of binary, O-self, and one-self. And that's where quantum computing enters the picture. The quantum leap. Instead of bits, quantum computers use qubits short for quantum bits. Unlike classical bits, which can only be zero or one, qubits can be both at the same time. This strange property is called superposition. Think of a spinning coin. While it's in the air, it's not just heads or tails, it's both until it lands. That's what a qubit does. It holds multiple states at once. There's also entanglement, another mind-bending principle. When two qubits are entangled, the state of one instantly affects the other, even if they're on opposite sides of the universe. With superposition and entanglement combined, quantum computers can explore countless possibilities simultaneously. Instead of testing one answer at a time like classical computers, quantum computers can evaluate many at once. How quantum computers work. So how does a quantum computer actually function? Inside, you'll find a quantum processor. To protect fragile qubits from noise and interference, these machines are kept at temperatures colder than outer space, just a fraction above absolute zero. Qubits are manipulated using quantum gates, which apply operations to change their states. Think of gates as the building blocks of quantum logic, similar to how AND, OR, and NOT gates work in classical computers, but much more powerful. Quantum algorithms are then designed to take advantage of this strange behavior, for example, Schur's algorithm can factor large numbers incredibly fast, which could break much of today's encryption. Grover's algorithm can search through databases faster than any classical approach. But here's the key. Quantum computers aren't just faster classical computers. They're fundamentally different, excelling at certain types of problems that classical computers struggle with. Applications of quantum computing. The potential of quantum computing is massive. Let's explore some real-world applications. Medicine and drug discovery. Quantum computers could simulate molecules at the quantum level. This would allow researchers to design new drugs and treatments in weeks, not decades. Imagine faster cures for cancer, Alzheimer's, or new vaccines. Artificial intelligence. AI depends on analyzing enormous amounts of data. Quantum computers could accelerate this process, improving machine learning, natural language processing, and even robotics, cryptography, and cybersecurity. Today's encryption methods rely on the difficulty of factoring large numbers, but a powerful quantum computer could break this encryption, putting global data at risk. This is why scientists are already working on quantum-safe encryption. Climate and energy. Quantum systems could simulate complex weather models and optimize renewable energy grids. This could lead to better climate predictions and more efficient use of clean energy. Finance and logistics. From predicting stock market shifts to optimizing delivery routes. Quantum computing could transform industries that rely on solving highly complex problems. In short, quantum computing could touch nearly every aspect of our lives, challenges and limitations. But we're not there yet. Quantum computing faces enormous challenges. Decoherence, qubits are fragile. Even tiny vibrations, light or heat, can make them lose information. Error correction. To correct mistakes, researchers meet thousands of qubits working together to maintain reliable output. Scalability. Today's quantum computers have only hundreds of qubits, 
For real breakthroughs, we may need millions. Cost. These machines require advanced cooling systems and labs costing millions of dollars. That's why, despite all the excitement, quantum computing is still in its early experimental phase. The future of quantum computing? So, what's next for quantum computing? Tech giants like Google, IBM, and Microsoft are racing to build practical systems. Some experts predict we will achieve quantum advantage the moment when quantum computers outperform classical, ones on meaningful tasks within the next decade. Quantum computing will likely first appear in specialized fields like pharmaceuticals, uh, eye research, and national security. But over time, just like personal computers, it could become more accessible. The 1980s brought the PC revolution. The 2000s brought smartphones. The 2030s may well be remembered as the quantum revolution. Quantum computing isn't just about speed, it's about possibility. It could transform medicine, uh, like climate science, and finance. It could force us to rethink how we protect our data. And it could even help us answer some of the biggest mysteries in science. We're standing at the edge of a technological revolution. The only question is, are we ready for the quantum future? Thanks for watching this deep dive into quantum computing, next-gen processing explained. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to HTech for more content on cutting-edge technology. And let me know in the comments, what excites you most about the future of quantum computing?